Hello and welcome to today's session. Today we are looking at chromosomal inheritance, guys. Okay, chromosomal inheritance. So we need to have learned what we mean by chromosomes. Uh, we discussed mitosis and meiosis when you are looking at uh, introduction to human genetics. So in this topic, we'll be focusing on explaining the process of chromosomal inheritance and now stating a few abnormal chromosomal inheritance. Uh, of course, we know that um, chromatin is made up of DNA, RNA, and proteins uh, that normally uh, add up to make up the chromosomes, while chromatids are one of the two identical parts of our chromosomes. And these two chromatids are normally held together at a center that we normally refer to it as centromia. So we have uh, 46 chromosomes in general, where we have 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of sex chromosomes. We need to know exactly what genotype is, and the genotype normally refers to the genetic makeup of an organism, while as phenotype refers to the observable traits of um, an organism. So we normally use a Punnett square to just predict the possible genotypes and phenotypes of spring from a genetic cross. So chromosomal inheritance um, is the process by which these traits will be transferred from parents to offspring through their chromosomes. And uh, we have specific genes located on chromosomes that determine these traits. We have uh, what we call autosomal dominant uh, inheritance. So if a person carries one copy of the dominant allele on the autosomal chromosomes, they will express the dominant trait even if the other allele is recessive. That's why we talk of the law of autosomal dominant inheritance. Second, we have autosomal recessive inheritance where we have uh, this one now for a recessive trait to be expressed, an individual must inherit two copies of these recessive alleles, one from the parent, okay, from each parent. And you find that if an individual inherits one dominant allele and one recessive, then they are uh, they they will be carriers, okay, and will not express it since it will be masked by the dominant allele. Remember, autosomal recessive normally skip a generation until we have now uh, uh, two guys who are carriers coming together. Then we have X-linked inheritance, and uh, these are genes located on the X chromosomes which exhibit X inheritance. So since Males only have one X chromosomes. They are more likely to express X-linked traits, whether dominant or recessive, inherited from their, their parents. So females, these ones, they normally have two chromosomes. So for them, they can only be carriers of X-linked traits without expressing them. We have the Y-linked inheritance, and this one only occurs in, uh, you find that only the female, the males will be affected. So genes are located on the Y chromosomes. Are, they are inherited from the father to the sons and are responsible for male-specific um, specific traits. For the mitochondrial inheritance, we can we see that some traits are inherited through the, the, the mother's maternal, my, 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 mitochondrial DNA. So mitochondrial disorders are passed from the mother to all of her offspring, but are normally expressed in individuals with mutation in mitochondrial DNA. Okay, so we have uh, we have that kind of uh, so the mother will affect all her offspring. Okay, so in normal inheritance, you find that uh, the individual normally receives twenty-two autosomal or autosomal chromosomes and one sex chromosome from each parent. So the sex of the newborn is determined by the father. So if a Y-bearing uh, sperm fertilizes the egg. The XY combination will result in development of a male. And if a, an X bearing sperm fertilizes the egg, then the XX combination will result in the development of a female. So, all conditions being equal, there is usually a 50% chance of having either a girl or a boy. However, for reasons not clear, okay, you find that more males are normally conceived in, gene in gen general populations than females, but later as they grow, uh, males normally die and now they now even the number of the the, the females all right so we can <clears throat> can use this panel square to show which inheritance of uh, sex is in human is correct guys you find that d will be the correct one since at least it displays the xx for the for the for the female and the xy 
for the male so that xx will form xx this is a female this is a female this is a boy and this is a boy guys great <clears throat> So, male gene scientific evidence have shown that there is normally a gene located on the Y chromosomes that brings about the maleness. So, embryo begins life with no evidence of a gender. But then along the way, about third month, the development normally starts to show the feature of a gender. So, males can be distinguished from females through genetic studies. So we have a gene called the, T, the TDFG. This is the testis determining factor gene. And this is the gene responsible for the maleness. So when this gene is lacking from the Y chromosomes, the individual is a female, even though the chromosomal inheritance may be XY. On the other hand also, you find that if the gene is present in an XA individual who is supposed to be a female, then this individual will be a male. So it is at this time that autosomes do set in leading to abnormalities. So we have um, the Mendelian inheritance. It helps us understand how uh, genes are passed from, uh, from the first generation to the second generation and so on and so forth. So the Mendelian inheritance are just principles of heredity that are not, that were proposed by a Gregory Mendel. Okay, this one uh, was an Austrian monk in the 19th century. So Mendel's groundworking, uh, groundbreaking work laid the foundation for modern understanding of genetics, and he stated three principles. The first principle was the law of segregation. In this law. Mendel proposes that each individual has two alleles for each gene, one inherited from each parent. So these alleles normally segregate. Segregation means to separate during the formation of gametes. That is the, the sperm and the egg cells. So only one allele is passed on to each offspring. So during gamete formation, uh, that's meiosis. Homologous chromosomes normally separate, and each gamete receives only one allele for, for each gene. So the two alleles carried by the individuals are distributed to different gametes independently, and that gives us to the second law. And uh, here, Mendel proposes that alleles for different genes separate independently during the formation of genes. So the inheritance of one gene does not influence the inheritance of another gene. That is to say that the assortment alleles for one gene is independent of the assortment of the alleles for another gene. So the presence of a specific allele for one trait does not affect the presence of the specific allele for another trait, okay? So guys, uh, you can be able to get uh, to get and see, and uh, this is normally demonstrated when we have the heterozygous, uh, heterozygous uh, formulations. Lastly, we have the law of dominance, and uh, here in, uh, I find that in a uh, heterozygous individual, and the heterozygous individuals, these are individuals who are having two different alleles for a gene. Uh, one allele is for the dominant, uh, which determines the phenotypes, and the other one is recessive, which has no observable effect because it is masked by the dominant, the dominant allele. So you find that dominant allele will mask the expression of recessive genes in a heterozygous individuals. So the dominant allele is expressed in the phenotype, while the recessive allele is only expressed when the individual is in a homozygous uh, recessive. Like here, by guy, you can see, guys. We have a heterozygous individual. That is D, capital D, capital S, lowercase d. So capital D is for the dominant gene and uh, lowercase d is for the recessive gene. So if you crossbreed, you find that you'll have someone with uh, homozygous, um, homozygous dominant, okay? So here, it, the D will be dominant, okay? And here, D, D, capital D, lowercase d, we have the two of them, okay? So they are phenotypically, it's going to be dominant, okay? Phenotypically, you'll be able to see the D. But for the last one, D, 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 this one is going to be a recessive. So the recessive, um, the recessive allele will be observable in this case because it is homozygous. 
So how 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 you come across individuals with abnormalities? Have you come across people with individualities? Sometimes individuals are born with either too many or too few autosome autosomal chromosomes. The most likely reason is non junction of chromosomes or sister chromatids, which fail to separate. So at times, even though there is a correct number of chromosomes, again, one chromosome may be defective in such a way because of chromosomal mutations. So chromosomes may be damaged as a result of exposure to radiation, chemical agents, addictive drugs, pesticides, and other known to, uh, to cause chromosomal mutations. Others are even unknown. So the effect may vary from uh, may vary from not being uh, life threatening to life threatening. Okay, and much will be dependent on the damage subjected to the chromosome. So as a result, we normally have a few syndromes, and uh, this is just a pattern of symptoms that occur together in the same individuals due to the presence of an abnormal conditions. And we could have examples like Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome, uh, Prada Willy syndrome, and uh, Angelman uh, syndrome. So we could have like um, Down syndrome, and this one, the chromosomal abnormality, we have a trisomy at the 21. Uh, chromosomes and it might result to an individual having intellectual disability, distinctive facial features, and even heart problems. Turner syndrome, we have a monosomy, and uh, here we have um, uh, we have a loss of one X chromosome. So you find that this kind of females, they'll have short stature, they'll have webbed neck and infertility in some cases. Klinefelter syndrome, we have a trisomy, an addition of a chromosomes, or guys. So here we find that uh, they'll be in, they'll be tall stature in males, and uh, they'll have underdeveloped testes and sometimes suffer from infertility. The Cryduchat syndrome is a result from a deletion of part of chromosome five. So individuals here will be characterized by high pitch cry, intellectual disability, and distinctive facial features. The Pater syndrome is a trisomy on number 13, okay? So we will have severe intellectual disability, heart defects, and extra digits and autos. We have the Edward syndrome, and this one is also another addition of a chromosomes on number 18. So we could have severe intellectual disability, heart defects, and clenched fits. 47XXY syndrome, um, this is XYY, extra Y, okay? Remember for the clean filter syndrome, it is XXY, but for this one, it is XYY, okay? So we have stall stature and increased risk for learning disability. Triple X, this one again, then we also have fragile X, Brother Willie syndrome and Angelman syndrome, guys. These are very interesting conditions. Uh, in this one, of course, both of them involve deletion of genes on chromosome 15. But you find that for the Brother Willie syndrome, this will be deletion on the man aspect, and uh, the Angelman will be deletion of on chromosome 5 from the maternal side. Okay, and this one is also referred to as the happy. They are normally happy, fly, smiling. Okay, happy. Happy man. All right. Correct. So male and female have to have some differences and we have significant differences that can only be ascertained by molecular studies. However, there are situations when an individual's sex affiliation cannot be ascertained, especially when they emanate between um, male and female and can be demonstrated by their genitalia. Okay, so this poses major moral and ethical uh, issues in social setting. For example, the athletic competition, there has been an issue uh, which normally tends to be brought on board and people complaining about whether to classify some athletes as male or as females. So it is important to be able to certify that an individual is a male or a female. So since physical examination alone may fail to provide an answer, as so male has a sex exchange operation. Okay, so it is often necessary to resort to examine the cells in molecular uh, laboratory. So we have some tests that can be done, like uh, karyotyping. Uh, this one can provide an answer. However, it is a long method and it uses molecular studies. 
Number two, we have the bar body test where we look at the bar bodies and it is so happens that uh, the XX who are females, they have small dark bar, bar bodies and uh, this bar body was named after the person who first identified them and they are actually present in the nuclear. Whereas the XY which, who are males, they will have no comparable spots of chromatin in their nuclear. How do you detect birth defects? If a physician wants to detect birth defects, then we have a method that we normally refer to as chorionic villi sampling, which can be used to collect embryonic cells as early as the fifth week of development. So this is a procedure where the doctor will insert a thin tube through the vagina into the uterus. Then with the help of ultrasound, this gives a picture of the uterine content. Okay? Okay, guys. So guys, you need to be able to give uh, identified types of chromosomes. You need to use a diagram to differentiate between mitosis and meiosis. You could refer to the uh, previous lecture. Also, a link will be popping up for that. You could also describe the process of chromosomal inheritance, explain how bad defects are, 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 are detected. Okay, and then you need to be able to at least describe any two syndromes caused by chromosomal abnormalities. Thank you so much, guys. Until then, guys, take care of yourself. Find time also to do some practice on the practice quizzes. Thank you.